Hey there, and welcome to this video series about how we can deploy a Node.js web application to Heroku. And Heroku is a deployment platform that will allow us to deploy web applications in many different uh, languages and also frameworks. We have Node.js, we have uh, Java, Ruby, PHP, uh, Python. We have a lot of different languages. And uh, we can get started for free. We can sign up for free. So if we don't have an account then we can just sign up here click on the bottom there and then we can provide some information then we can create a free user account uh, i already have an account uh, created here so if you have created an account already then you just click the login button and fill out the credentials there and then we click login So then we can see that when we're logged into Heroku that we don't have any apps yet. Uh, we can create one, but we're not going to create an app uh, through the website. We're going to create it using uh, the Heroku command line interface. So if we search for Heroku CLI, then we also get a result from this. We can see a command line interface there. We can go with that. And then it says install the Heroku CLI. And then it will take us to a section where we can download the, in different ways, we can download the command line interface. So we have Heroku and we're logged in here. And uh, then we have, uh, I'm running Visual Studio Code and we're going to be building a small Node.js application, just a basic one that will do it for our demo app. And then we will deploy this on Heroku. So first we need to go in here in Visual Studio Code and then we can create a new project. So I'm just going to say uh, open folder right there. Let's make a new folder in our directory here called Heroku deploy. So we select this folder here. So we have the basic setup here. We have the welcome screen of Visual Studio Code. Next up is that we should get the terminal right there so we can make a new project. So let's run npm init. So that will allow us to create a new project here. So it's going to say package name, that's going to be fine. The version number, description, entry point. Um, I'm going to change this to server.js because it will be a server-based application, a Node.js application uh, that is only one route. So it's a really basic REST API, you could say, that just have one route. So I will call this server.js, but you can also call this index.js. Test command, git repository, keywords. Let's just leave it by this. And we have new version available here, I can see. So this will give us a package JSON file there with all the information is there. So that is nice. So next up, we need to install the dependencies for our project. So we run npm install, and we're going to use express and .env to keep track of our environment variables so we can see how it works uh, with Heroku. So we install this. And I think I had a spelling error there. All right, so we can see now that we've installed Express and .env. We have it right here in the dependencies in package.json. And yeah, I had an error first in my command, but now we have the dependencies in our, uh, in our app here. So next up is that we should create our symbol app. So we will create a new file called server.js. And we're going to make it really simple so that we focus on the actual deployment here. So we're going to write const express. I'm going to require, oops. I'm going to require express. So we're going to make a new app there. A new express app there. Let's write that there. And then 
We also need .env. That is, this is just to help us read our .env files. There. Right. So let's make a simple get route here. Let's just call this welcome. Let's make a request and response. And in there, we're just going to send status 200. And we're going to pass in a message that I'm alive. So we can see that, that our basic application is up and running. And we can fire off this route here, the, the slash welcome, and we get some response. So next, we should define the port that our app is running on. We can use process.env.port. And normally, yeah, we could use 4000. It depends on what port you want to run this on. And then we're going to listen for this port. And again, let's just make an arrow function there to uh, write our console.lock with service running on port. There. Okay. So now we have a really basic application. We just have our requirements, uh, express and .env. We have our welcome. We got the port. We have uh, servers running on port, a certain number. And if it can't find any port that we have provided when we run the app, it's going to default to port 4000. So what we can do is normally you would probably have an env file here and then you would provide port 3000, 4000, whatever. And then our application will read this due to the .env config, and then we will be able to describe our port using uh, the env file. We can also have other settings in here. And if there is no setting in the env file, it will default to port 4000. So if we run the, the application, let's run npm start. We can see servers running on port 3000. If we head over to localhost 3000 we don't get anything here but if we write welcome we can see i'm alive so we actually have we actually have an output there okay so our server is running so next up is uh, we have a localhost version running here uh, the question is now how can we actually get this running remote on heroku and as i said we need to get the Heroku CLI, that is a command line interface that will allow us to communicate with Heroku using the terminal. So there are both installers for Mac OS and Windows and Ubuntu Linux. So take whatever installer is appropriate for your operating system. And when you are done installing, then you should be able to do uh, write Heroku and then uh, check the version using the dash V and there we can see that we get an output here. So we have Heroku installed uh, or Heroku CLI installed on our system. So next is that we need to we need to push this code to Heroku in order for this to actually be deployed on Heroku because it needs the source code. And the way we do this is that we should in initialize a Git repository. So we run git init and then we will get a basic version control here. And next up is that, let's just make uh, dot git ignore. And in there, let's just put node modules and also put the env file that we don't want to commit there. So we can see it's being excluded from the, from the untracked items there. Okay, so then we have a basic git repository. Next up is that when we've installed the Heroku CLI, we can do Heroku login. It's going to tell you, press any key to open up the browser or log in or hit Q to exit. So let's just press any key. That should take us to the browser. And we can see login to Heroku CLI. Then we need to log in and 
if we've just been logged into the actual website, it should tell you that you are logged in. So we can close this window and let's take a look in our terminal. It will say logged in, done as this username. Okay, so then we can create a new project in Heroku. The way we do this is that we run Heroku, create, and then we have to decide for the name of this. And it should be unique if we, if we choose a name called Heroku deploy, Node.js, something like this. Let's see what happens. Yeah, then we can see that it's trying to create the project, but the name must start with a letter and with a letter or digit and can only contain lowercase letters, digits and dashes. Hmm. Okay, so we cannot have underscores in here. Let's just do like this, see what happens then. Yeah, then we can see actually that the name has already been taken, so we have to decide, you probably have to do some a bit more unique uh, to this. So I can take, let's just take my username here, deploy Node.js, let's see what happens here. Then we can see that it has created the project, that we have, we both have a Git link here, and we also have a link to the actual application. And if we head over to our personal page here in Heroku, we can see if we refresh the page that we actually have this SMSJ deploy Node.js, so it has created a new project using the CLI. So that's awesome. So now we have more or less connected Heroku with this project here. And we can also see this if we run git remote-v. This will show us that we actually have uh, some a, a remote setting, a remote git link to Heroku. And usually, normally, if we are not using Heroku, we just use GitHub, then we will have um, it will be called origin here because we have a link to the GitHub repo. But right here, we're using Heroku because Heroku also have a remote Git repository that we can push to. So that's really nice. So then we need to do one more thing here. We need to create, or it's not, it's not strictly needed, but it is recommended to have a proc file and it's called proc file with a capital P. So we will create such a file there. So then we have proc file there. And we can also see that Visual Studio Code recognizes this as a Heroku specific file there. So next up is that we should put a small piece of information in here. We should provide it is web and what it should do when starting up the application. And in a production setup, it should just run server.js. It should run node with the parameter of server.js because this is our application that is running right here. Okay, so there we have the proc file that uh, Heroku will use. So then it's just a matter of getting this information to Heroku and then it will start to build it and deploy it. So let's see if we do git add, we just add everything there and git commit with a message. Let's just do write initial commit. So then it will commit our uh, small application here. And I think one th thing we should actually do is we should probably rename our branch from master to main. So we do this using this command here. Then we have main there. And then we should push our code to Heroku. So we push the main branch to Heroku. And what we should see now is that it is actually starting to building the source. So we get a lot of information from Heroku now that it is uh, finding the dependencies, finding node versions, finding NPM versions, and it is building our applications now. And compressing, done, launching, a lot of things here. So verifying deployed, done. So if we head back to Heroku, we can see that we have the same info, SMSJ, deploy, Node.js, but we now have Node.js, so we, if we click on the application, then we can see that we get some a lot of different options here. We can see that, that we are using a free dyno. This is, really, this is totally free. We can always um, upgrade our account. We can configure add-ons. We can configure databases to this if we want to do that. Uh, we get this in web node 
server.js that we configured in the proc file. And we can see that we have the initial release. We can see the build log and it is being deployed. So if we head over to the app, we can see we have a button up here called open app. If we click on that, we can see we get an error because we need to use the route here, welcome. So now we actually have our, whoa, that was too, too much zooming in there. So we can see we got the uh, message there from our really simple REST API, our really simple uh, application there, I'm alive. So it actually works, our deployment. And if you wanna see more information about how the build was made, you can click on the view build log and it will tell you more information about it. Okay, so I think this is uh, enough for the first video about actually deploying this stuff. And uh, the next video we will talk a little bit about if you have sort of a database connected to this, how can you also get these environment variables, just like the connection string. Uh, how can you uh, tell Heroku that we also want our application, our remote application to connect to the database? because we have a nice handy feature called uh, the config virus that we can use to set up these environment variables that we have in our application. So I hope you make this work and have fun with this. Bye-bye.